Welcome back. I'm Mabel Jong. Civica RX was launched amid fanfare last year, backed by philanthropic donors and hundreds of hospitals. And driving that initiative was really the shortages and skyrocketing prices for commonplace products, products like saline solution. And we're so pleased right now to have in our studio Martin Van Tries, who is the president and CEO of Civica RX. Thank you so much for your time today. Well, thank you for inviting me. Now, when you first launched, the plan was initially to manufacture your own drugs to really address the shortages of some of these commonplace products. That hasn't happened. Um, tell me what the journey was like since you first launched. Well, it takes time to set up a manufacturing facility. You know, when you, you have to build the facility, then you have to validate it, and then you have to make a submission to the FDA to get it approved. That's a long process. Our goal is to bring critical medicines to patients as quick as possible. So from day one, we always had a three-pronged strategy on how to do that. First leg of that stool was to encourage manufacturers who had exited the market to re-enter the market by us giving them long-term guaranteed contracts. And they were actively working in that space. The other two parts of the stool are developing our own ANDAs and using contract manufacturers. And then the third part is either to buy or build our own manufacturing facility. And we're simultaneously trying to implement all three parts of that stool. And I wrote a letter to the FDA back in October of 2018 describing what we were going to do in, in response to the FDA's request on uh, public comments on drug shortages. And so everyone can look up that letter on the FDA's public docket and get a lot more details about how sure. we're gonna do that. Okay, and your, one of the legs of the stool was really getting people who to re-enter the market. Have you had good response to that? Yeah, so currently right now we're negotiating with 12 companies to re-enter the market to produce these products that are critical for hospitals to use every day, that if they're not available have a negative impact on patients health and safety so either their treatments are canceled because the drugs are not available or their treatments are delayed or worse yet they get an alternative therapy which is not as effective or costs a lot more mm -hmm. it's estimated by the government that alternate treatments cost the US health system 400 million dollars a year right what were some of the drugs that um, you believe are some of the crucial ones that, uh, that so, we should get out there? So the most crucial ones for a hospital to have so they can operate are like antibiotics, anesthetic agents, pain management products, cardiac drugs, and nutritional products. Mm -hmm. What is it about um, our system here in the United States that makes pricing so high, A, and really difficult to bring down? Um, you've come up with a very innovative solution with uh, Civica, but uh, yet you are encountering some issues as well. Well, I think um, drug pricing is not just related to, you can't say it all in one bucket. You know, the industry's not heterogeneous, right? You have branded, patented products, and that pricing structure is completely different than a generic drug product. And so in the generic industry, you have two big problems. One is you have individuals out there like Martin Scarelli doing predatory pricing and buying up assets and creating uh, artificial monopoly and raising the price hundreds of thousands of percent. But on the other hand, you have other products that are very old, very complex to make, where the price has fallen so much and so low that manufacturers exit to market and now you have a shortage of manufacturers. And so what happens is if anything goes wrong in the supply chain, since there's not re that resiliency and the redundancy in the marketplace, you have an almost immediate shortage pop up. Okay, and how do insurance companies, what are their role, what is their role in this? So I, I, the, I don't think there's a, the insurance company have a role around drug shortages. I mean, this is just a broken economic model on how the prices got there. I think insurance companies have an impact on the other end. Can they force the prices down when someone's doing predatory pricing? But in reality, if they're the only person who has the product, the insurance companies have kind of limited power, especially for an orphan drug, to drive that price down. Mm -hmm. What did you not anticipate when you first started your company? I, I think we did a really nice job uh, as we were planning to, to build the company. 
to take a lot of smart people into a two-day seminar and do a risk assessment. What were the risks to the business? And knowing what the risks were, how would we mitigate those risks? So I think we've done a good job anticipating what's coming at us and putting places, procedures and processes in place to prevent that. I think the part that was the greatest learning for me, right, is I'm learning about how health systems and hospitals work. And right? what I, was I, shocking I, to you? What was surprising? Uh, what was surprising to me is um, how hospitals are in such financial distress in this country, especially the small community hospitals that serve our rural communities. Uh, they're going out of business quickly, mm. right? And so hopefully by giving them drugs that are available at affordable prices, we can help them booster and s be more sustainable. But they're having hard times. Yeah. You're going to be speaking uh, a little bit later to our audience here at the World Healthcare Congress. What's the message you really want people to take away after you're done? Well, I think the big message is that drug shortages do hurt patients. It's not, it's not just causes inefficiencies in a hospital or raises prices. It really has a negative impact on patient health and safety. And I think too many people forget that. Okay. How are you finding the conference so far? Excellent. I really enjoy it. I'm glad I was invited this year. All right. Thank you so much for your time uh, thank today. You. Thank I really you. Appreciate, appreciate it. it. And I'm Mabel Jong. Stay tuned. We have much more to come. Thank you.